Carl Hughes and Father Tony King, he embarked on a project way back. Yes. To replace yeah. one man with another. Yeah, 1989, Father Tony. Yeah. A call, a call from Lee Mulch to show up to his house. And I remember this, I'm arriving in and to find there before me that, that Carl was there and uh, Sean Stanton and Joe Barry, John Coffey, Tom Durkin. Uh, there were seven of us. And, That's right. and what were the purposes of the meeting? Uh, well, Liam advised us uh, that it was to actually put a statue up on top of the octagon as we knew it then. And it, uh, he suggested that we put up a statue of St. Patrick. I think it, at the time, and a good few years before that, there was a, a lot of talk about doing something, but it never got done. And Lean passed that uh, monument every day of his life for over 40 years. And it was empty, it was derelict, it looked terrible. There was ass carts at the bottom of it. There was a public toilet. It, it's absolutely, you couldn't believe how bad it looked. Mm -hmm. And it was decided, Lean, it was the driving force in it, to mm -hmm. do something about it. Mm -hmm. Mm. And was there any discussion about, about who to put up there? Was it accepted straight well, off? I think, you see, there was quite an amount of discussion going on uh, in the Urban Council. Mm. <clears throat> and about 1984, there was Mickey Kavanagh, and I got the, you know, the backing of the council to go to America and to hopefully to raise money to the ancient order of the Hibernians. But that didn't seem to come to any, any come to fruition, mm. and uh, so things rested again. So time and again in the past, you see, it would be, because going back to, to um, it was in, in 1830, in 1815, was it 1815? Uh, when it was put up in the beginning, 1835. 30. It was put yeah. up in 1845 46. Mm. The people of mm. Westport contributed yeah. 18,000 pounds. Yeah, that's right. To put up what? The, 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 to build the monument, the mm. octagon, and to put uh, Glendinning mm. on top of it. And who was Glendinning? Glendinning was, he was a very wealthy man. He was a banker and uh, he certainly had accumulated a lot of wealth. He was the son of a local rector and seemed to be a very entrepreneurial character and had a lot of things around Mayo in general, so that when he died, they felt that they, they would like to honour him, and they set up this uh, monument on the Octagon. Mm. An idea how much it cost at the time? 18,000 is mm. what they collected at the time. At the time, yeah. yeah. At the time. A lot of money then. Yeah. Well, we're just after coming out of the famine. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it was just... We're in the thick of it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. So, uh, anyhow, we met on the 2nd of February, 1989, seven of us. There's three of us just alive now, myself, Father Tony and John Coffey. Mm. And um, uh, we uh, had to decide who would be the sculptor. So, I think Father Tony uh, got three mm. names. Uh, I can't remember who they were, but yeah. one of them uh, yeah. eventually yeah. did it. I wrote to Patrick Pye. Patrick Pye is a, you know, he died recently, <coughs> and he was uh, he did put in two the two new windows and the and the sanctuary, mm -hmm. Saint Mary's. So I got to know him at that time, and he used to come regularly to to Clare Island as well on holidays, and um, so he he he, uh, he nominated I think three, but he put a, a special mark before Ken Thompson's name. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, Ken was the man that was his. He did a, a maquette miniature mm -hmm. uh, creation of what it looked like. Did you give him any guidance? No, I don't think we did. No. I think uh, we uh, uh, they were each given the same brief uh, that we wanted uh, a statue of Saint Patrick and uh, on top of the monument, and uh, each of them had to interpret. Uh, the uh, what was required, and I remember the night the three artists showed us their different maquettes, uh, and we had a discussion. Yeah, and it was agreed pretty much unanimously uh, that we would go with Ken Thompson mm. and his statue. Mm. 
Mm. And how did you fund it? Well, <laughs> there was, um, uh, we decided that uh, we would appeal um, to the people of Westport and um, we did door-to-door -door collections. Mm. Um, uh, we talked to all the business people. Uh, we sent out uh, uh, letters uh, to uh, Westport people that had left town and that had done very well uh, subsequently. And the response we got from the people and from everybody we wrote to was enormous. Yeah. We yeah. collected at the time £70,000, mm -hmm. which was a huge amount of money. Yeah. And how much was it to cost? Well, the sculpture itself uh, was uh, 26500 mm. And then the uh, the carving and the scripts are, the, and the, there are four carvings and there are four uh, of with with uh, writing mm. uh, on the on the base, mm. and they cost eight thousand. And uh, then I think the transport was something like four thousand, and there were uh, th those were the main expenditures around that. I think hiring the the crane, of course. Was a major to get the whole thing up there. Scaffolding yeah. the whole thing. It cost us forty six thousand, basically, to put the statue in place, mm. and we then had twenty four thousand left over, and we used that to light up the Protestant church, the Catholic church, and the Mall. Okay, so you got and, it. Uh, it. Basically, in <coughs> 19, on St Patrick's Day in nineteen ninety, Father Tony, mm. uh, we unveiled. The statue, who right. unveiled it there? Well, the uh, Archbishop Joseph Casti came down mm. for the actual launch of the fundraising, mm -hmm. you know, and he was hugely supportive. And particularly because, uh, you see, at one stage in, in uh, 1943, Father Fergus, James Fergus, was appointed administrator. He was just here for a year. And at that time, after a mission, they all, there was a kind of public gathering and they all wanted to do something about the Octagon and it was a proposal that a statue of Christ the King would be put on the Octagon. And there was a public collection at the time and they, I think they were about 2,000. So the parish then, with, uh, with uh, Archbishop Cassidy said, contributed 6,000 to start off the fundraising. And But for the actual, when we came to the, the day of, of the official opening and the blessing of it, his health wasn't good, so Archbishop Canaan came in his place and did the blessing for us on the day. So mm -hmm. the statue was unveiled on Paddy's Day, 1990. 1990. And, mm -hmm. the, um, and the churches were lit up in 1990 and the mall was lit up. And it probably was the first major uh, sort of improvement that you could see in Westport. Uh, and it brought up great pride among the people. Uh, they were absolutely thrilled with it and I think everybody could see how you could make the town really lovely and it probably was the start of a long journey that has allowed Westport to win the tidy towns and you'd have to you know take your hat off to the council at the time they were very supportive and very helpful and they came up with the idea of doing the whole plinth at the bottom mm -hmm. they subsequently went on uh, to you know uh, do all the footpaths on the street put in new lighting um, you know, and then the tidy towns came along and got involved in, in massive work and in getting people to repaint their premises and, uh, you know, put up all the beautiful flowers. And it has continued to this day. And uh, uh, it is a great sense of pride, I think, uh, for everybody involved and especially for all the people of Westport um, that all of this happened. And I think that the putting Patrick up on the monument was the start of it. Liam, Liam Mulch Jr., you know, at the, at the 25th anniversary of that. That's right. We had a gathering again where a uh, plan uh, 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 was put in, in the uh, uh, explaining, giving a bit of the history mm. of the octagon and of the sculpture. Uh, so that there was a gathering for that. That's right. Uh, that was done in 2015. Yeah. 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 But I think, uh, you know, Father Tony would agree with me, uh, without Lee Walsh, this would never have happened. Mm. He had tremendous drive and uh, great personality. Mm. We met in his house every uh, once a month 
we all had jobs to do and the whole project was signed, sealed and delivered within 12 months. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. really, it, it's a monument to Liam. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it really wouldn't have happened without him. That is true because he certainly had, I suppose he, he was passing that way, as you were saying, Carl, so often every day on his way to work. And uh, it certainly decided that, and you see that the Urban Council were very supportive. But the fact is to raise that kind of money or to get it from any source uh, wasn't within their, their reach. No. So that Liam took it and uh, it's absolutely true to his, yeah. his vision and his yeah. determination. And yeah. oh, he really certainly cool. enthused everybody to get yeah. behind it. And, and it's sad to think now that uh, Joe Berry, Tom Durkin, um, mm. Sean Stanton, yeah. uh, and there's a fourth person. Uh, has John, John Coffey? Um, and, no, John Coffey. Well, either like, yeah, John is, yeah, 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 John is quite alive. ill at the moment. Yeah. And Liam Watch and Sean Stanton. Yeah, and, yeah, and Liam, Liam, Sean Stanton, Tom Druckin, and Joe Berry have passed on. Mm -hmm. They're four great guys. Yeah. And very much community orientated, and you know we're always looking for the betterment of what could, what they could do to make the community and the whole mm -hmm. area better. Yeah. God be good to them. Yeah. Well, well done, lads. Thanks. Sir. Now, oh, guys, that's the, res the results of your labours. That's right, yeah. It's still looking good today as yeah. it was when we put it up. It's lovely, isn't it? It really is nice. Yeah, it's yeah. lovely, yeah. There's a bit of writing. What's on the front there? The, the writing there is that those first words of St. Patrick's is called St. Patrick's Confession, his own life story. Yeah. And it starts off with those words, I am happy to sit up. Most of By and what are the icons each side of it then? So there's four prayers the, on the octagon and there are four reliefs showing Patrick at different stages uh, in his journey uh, to Ireland. Okay. And is there much uh, any of the original stuff in that? The, uh, the, the column original? Yes. From the Glendening days? Everything is original. Everything? Uh, the, we put in the panels, there was something else there. Uh, and indeed, if you look at some old photographs um, uh, of the original, there were two statues, one facing James Street and one facing Peter Street, and they covered uh, the statue philanthropy and something else. I don't know where those statues are now. Yeah. So, uh, big change. Yeah. Well, there used to be a point in there. Used to be ash carts. It was a, an area where rubbish in Westbrook would be put. But it was a market area one time, wasn't it? Yeah. Turf, was it a turf market? Turf, the turf market was there then, wasn't it? Yeah. But I, I tell you, it's a lovely area now, and it's a grand area for people to be able to, to meet, to, to stand out in the middle of Westbrook mm -hmm. and, 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 and look at the traffic of the people passing by. And here we are in the middle of a lovely garden that the council put in. So you couldn't ask for a nicer place. Yeah. You know, the amazing all the changes around here was the shops all changed yes, and the yeah, yeah, yeah. new hotel there, the old hotel done up, yeah? It's all for the good.